You are now listening to Out of the Blank. 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 Welcome to another episode of Out of the Blank Podcast. I'm here with Sam McChens Chesney. Look at that. I got it. I cleared it up. Hey, you got it. <laughs> so, Sam, what's up? Well, I'm out here in San Antonio, Texas, you know, just living my best life. Uh, <laughs> I had to change up the beginning question. I usually go, what do you do professionally and all this stuff? But I'm like, it sounds too much of like a dating profile. So I figured, you know, you want to tell me a little bit about yourself and then we could just go from there. Yeah. Um, well, I, a little bit about my background is I grew up here in San Antonio, um, lived here my whole life, uh, never have really been into the fungus aspect of the outdoor world, but always loved to be outside with the trees and learning about all the different plants in my area. Um, it wasn't until I had a, a stomach issue um, in my senior year of high school. Um, I'm 23, by the way, um, so that was about five years ago, and I got to the point where I was unable to eat a lot of different foods, and I was having a lot of pain and just really struggling with being a, at a healthy weight. Um, I lost about 80 pounds um, in six months, and that's a pretty drastic change from where I was. I decided to look into alternative medicine uh, because I'm allergic to a lot of different pharmaceuticals that I was given to try to help with the problem. And this is where you realize that mushrooms being a kind of, I guess I, they're a fungus, but they're what we would call a healthy fungus can actually cure a lot that's wrong inside of our bodies. Absolutely. Yeah. I looked into one specifically called the reishi or um, the strain was Ganoderma lingzi. Um, in China, it's known as the mushroom of immortality. Um, and so I figured if it's a mushroom of immortality, it can help me with my stomach problems at least. <laughs> See, what's crazy is when we look at all the supplements that people take on a daily basis, it really brings into one question always into my mind is if I ask somebody if they would want to live forever, what would they say? And I guarantee you probably 90% of the time they're going to say that they would like to live forever. And I fell in that 10% category, I feel like, that wouldn't want to live forever because I know how we're already trying so much as mankind to prolong our life. I mean, just from like the 1800s or 1700s where people were living to be like 30 or 40. I mean, if you lived to be 12 years old or something, that was a long life. And now we're seeing people hit ages 99 to 100 to like going up to 105. And even though that's not the common lifespan, it's because we're taking so much supplements to try and prolong our life, but they're not the healthy way. You know what I mean? It seems like we're throwing a bunch of stuff into a pill and it's a bunch of the good stuff, but we're really missing down on the key feature, which is just going to its basic root, such as having a ginger root or having a turmeric root or having something or turmeric, I guess that you would say. Yeah, exactly. Like we have all these new supplements coming out that are really just full of crap like there's not there's less and less natural products coming out in these supplements and some supplements claim to have these properties or these different herbs or roots but the amount the concentration that they have them in is not anywhere near what is needed for you to be like for your body to be responsive to those herbs or those different compounds well, the reason why I think people even try supplements in general is the whole factor is like, I used to live with somebody that, I mean, he literally had a straight up drawer of supplements <laughs> and like I take an average protein powder or something or something like that, but like a pre-workout maybe, but he had a full on drawer of like 80 different bottles and he's only 30 years old. And I was like, why do you need this? He goes, this one's for hair. This one's for this. This one's for my nails. This one's for that. I'm like, that's just collagen. It's a high amount of collagen. Why don't you just get it from your food? You can eat jello. You can eat so many different things. You could take a multivitamin that could have all that in there. You know, people, they want fast results, right? 
they want right. to pro they want they, they want to prolong their life but they want fast results which is pretty ironic i think i'm like you could easily try like one of the best um supplements i think is out there horny goat weed yeah absolutely that's a good one the name alone makes you just want to buy it off the shelf i mean <laughs> If anybody took like five minutes to walk down their Rite Aid, their CVS, and just look at all the supplement names, I mean, they're all very, very confusing, obviously, but there's very simple ones. And now even at Walmart, they got the bottle labeled out to tell you what can help with what. And half the time you look those up and they're a derivative or their primal thing is something from a mushroom or a fungus. And we just learned to manipulate the kind of genetic structure of it and turn it into what it is now. Right. And like, this is an interesting fact that I just learned too. It's the 40% of our antibiotics are derived from fungus. So penicillin is a main, is a major antibiotic and it's derived directly from penicillium, which is a, a fungus. Yeah. People don't even realize when you get a vaccine, that vaccine, a lot of the time is just the actual disease that they're trying to keep away from you, but it's been altered. So your body already gets used to it. Right. So that always made me wonder when that woman was taking a needle and sticking it into my arm. I was like, what are you injecting me with? Is that HIV? She's like, yeah, 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 you'll be okay. It's a vaccine for it. I'm like, I didn't know we had a vaccine. You're trying to turn me into the walking dead or something. <laughs> yeah. And it's really important. Like uh, there's that HPV vaccination. And if you don't finish the, you need to finish it because it's like a, th a three stage vaccine. And if you don't finish it, it doesn't fully affect the where it needs to because like you said it's it's an altered form of the virus so you're basically getting like the flu shot you're getting a i guess you would call it like a toned down version of the flu that's why a lot of people who get the flu shot including me get sick with the flu right after they get the flu shot because it's like your body is given the virus I wondered that. I was like, why does it feel like I feel more sick after I get the vaccine for something? Like I wasn't sick before. It's always it's always a strange one there. I think when we look at things of the sort such as um, you know, like you being able to kind of hook into mycology or it's it's just, that's that's the proper name for, it, right? Mycology. Yeah, mycology is the study of fungus. And you hooked into that just from a kind of an incident and a health hazard that you had at a young age. But that really sparks up the thing because people are like, well, how is a fungus going to help you cure a stomach issue? And I think that's because a lot of people don't understand what gut health is. We don't really know too much about our microbiome inside of, inside of our gut, first of all. All the essential probiotics, all this stuff people want to buy from their yogurt. Like, I'm eating probiotics. It's delicious. It's like it's doing a lot more than you think. We, on an average daily basis as just an American diet in general – consume a large amount of toxic things and sometimes our body after a long 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 time starts to wear down i mean i'm at fault for doing it myself i like a diet coke i like you know those types of things but you start to realize things when you're 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 when your stomach's off everything's off and i never really truly understood that until recently yeah absolutely we especially in American culture, don't really put a lot of emphasis on healthy eating and getting our diets to a point where they're sustainable. Because if we like, like go out and drink for one night, you've just wrecked your gut biome for at least two weeks from one night. Yeah, surprisingly, like I started finding out that people now are suffering more and more and more with gut health problems and it's been more heard of than i think for me recently than it has been for any other disease i could think of i always thought like oh someone got oh they got this disease oh they got that disease or they have oh, something wrong with their blood or something but i started realizing a lot of people are suffering from stomach issues and when i started doing more research about it like i'm suffering from some stomach issues myself and I'm getting kind of currently diagnosed for some stuff. And I, I was talking to the gastroenterologist and he's going over and he's, you know, going through like the IBS, all those types of symptoms and all these types. of. And I'm like, dude, it's not that like there feels like something's off, like like something's not being able to function properly. And um, as I was explaining it to him, I ended up finding out that I think what it is, it's um, 
the pelvic floor that's kind of close to where like your colon and everything is at the bottom i ended mm-hmm. up straining that and dropping it down and i asked well i was like what how what the hell is that from and he goes well that's something women experience when they're giving birth that means you put a severe amount of pressure out and you just dropped it and i was like oh so what do i have to do he's like just therapy and take some medication you'll be all right but <laughs> you start looking at things like that like your gut health that gets directly connected to everything in your body you know you start noticing like people that suffer from ibs or suffer for something that is severely hurting their gas like a gastro um, intestinal disease if they're suffering from something like that they start to get symptoms of things like liver disease um, kidney failure all your other organs get thrown out of balance just because of that one major organ yeah absolutely it's so crucial to keeping our body in in a homeostasis if we don't focus on that or if we don't take that into account and we start getting sick and we start trying to treat it with medications like some of those medications aren't going to help you like if like a lot of antibiotics destroy your natural biosphere or biome within your stomach and within your intestines which can lead you to other problems so it's like you treat one problem and then you get two more problems and then you start treating those two more problems and you get four more problems and it's like a never-ending system i wouldn't even call supplements treating anything if you look at the back of the bottle half this shit is trying to cure gives you that thing as a side effect like there's a uh what is that clair not claritin um what was the act to, the acne thing for kids i forgot it was a long time ago uh man. oh yeah it's like clear uh, I don't know, but one of its symptoms was like, if it was like, it's supposed to clear up acne or something. And the side effects, a dude, you know, that really fast talker guy that sounds like he's selling off cars or something comes on and goes, you may experience bloody diarrhea, severe headaches, death. I'm like, wait, I'll hold on a second. Hold on a second. <laughs> I won't have acne, but I'll be dead. So at least I look good in my coffin. Is that what we're getting at here? Like a lot of the supplements, it's a band aid. That's why we want, that's why people are, especially nowadays are trying to turn to more holistic healing methods. They're trying to find natural ways of being able to cure themselves, such as taking maybe some turmeric in the morning or finding a, a certain root or something, eating that in the morning, boiling it in their tea. Um, that's an easy way to do it. I mean, it's not, I w- it's not easier than taking a supplement, which is why I think it's not too popular even though it's starting to spark a trend now people much rather take the pills so they don't they can get everything instead of having to do it multiple times a day yeah and there's a lot of fungus out there too that that can help with that like there's um there's ganoderma which is something that's found naturally all around the country um you can pretty much go out into a forest or even just walking around a neighborhood and you can see this and it's like a, it's called a bracket fungus because of the way that it grows. Uh, Cause it kind of looks like a shelf on the, on the, on the tree. Um, oh, okay. See what I have to try and ask is my fascination with mushrooms only comes from uh, camping a lot. So I used to see the whole wide variety, even when you see like a slice in a tree and it looks like it's like oozing out bubbles or something. And that's what people are going to think of when you start saying mycology and fungus and all these types of things. They're going to think of the bad stuff. They're going to think of black mold. They're going to think of the weird exotic looking things that grow on the side by a stop sign where somebody eats it and you get a huge acid trip. That's not every single mushroom. A lot of them, I mean, they're very exotic looking, which is why I think a lot of people start to find fascination with them. But they have a wide variety and a wide range of health benefits, uses. We could be using that better for sustainable energy. We could be using that better because I just started finding out that mushrooms can tear down plastic. Like there Mm -hmm. are so many different methods that I feel like we're leaving on the table when it comes to this study in general. Yes, absolutely. And mushrooms can even help with like the dilution of uh, oil byproducts, like specifically uh, oyster mushrooms or plutarius, they can break down polyaromatic hydrocarbons or PAHs. And those are a very, very toxic carcinogenic compound that comes from the creation uh, or the the processing of, of crude oil. And it is so prevalent in 
our world that we just constantly get exposed to it. But these mushrooms, they break down the structure of this compound to make it no longer carcinogenic. And they actually change it to be more bioavailable to other plants, which can then break it down even further. Um, I'm doing, or I'm part of an experiment we're doing at Circle Acres in Austin. Um, it's near the Montopolis neighborhood, which is one of the oldest neighborhoods in Austin. Um, what we've done as as part of my uh, nonprofit organization that I'm a part of, uh, the Central Texas Mycological Society. Name we, drop. yeah, name drop. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this project was founded by Daniel Reyes of Myco Alliance, and we all came together and formed CTMS, the Central Texas Mycological Society, and we are doing an experiment in my, what's called myco remediation. So we're using mycelium to actually help clean the soil um, and also hold the toxins that are, are in the, the Montopoli, uh, that Circle Lakers site in that site because uh, it's a tributary. It's off of a tributary of the Colorado River, and that's similar to the same thing that you can see, like when a grub is kind of going through the soil. A lot of that there, basically, or a worm, I would say, is a lot of it's like that poop. It's doing all that. It's kind of fertilizing and keeping it fresh. That's why a lot of farmers put uh, worms into their soil. Basically, doing the same thing with fungus, but making it in a way to where it actually makes the soil cleaner. Right. Exactly. And that, that's something that we could start doing on a, on a bigger scale. And like we're, we're spreading out that experiment to other and different sites to see what can happen. Um, we're doing water testing on the site to see if it's actually how, what kind of success level we're having. And so far, it's, we're still waiting on the results from the last test. Um, we did one in December. Uh, but the one before that, it showed a little bit of promising results. Um, I don't have the exact percentages of like what the decrease in contamination levels was but it, it was it was marginal so it the mycelium is doing something right <laughs> and that's just mycelium by itself without any like plants we got two problems on that front one people get really really scared when it comes to what they're drinking unless it's flavored they don't care about all those artificial stuff that's in the little flavoring things as long as it tastes like lemon or something but when it comes to putting fungus inside of the water to clean it out people are going to have a problem because they think that's going to end up affecting their body when they don't even realize how much is actually in their tap water in general um so much of the water we drink like unless you're getting like you know we got volcanic ash water we got all these types of things there's stuff in there that is meant to do a certain thing and play a certain role the tap water you get from your sink depending on where you live if you live out near a city if you live out somewhere else it tastes different i didn't truly understand that until like you know if you go somewhere like my grandparents live out and you know it close to a big city of Baltimore and stuff. So I'm like, okay. And I remember I grabbed some water from their sink. It looked clear, but I tasted it. I was like, this tastes irony, tastes different. You know, yeah. we're fine with doing that. And we can notice that when it comes to iron or something, oh, our body needs iron. But when you say fungus, it becomes a problem. And I think if we can be able to manipulate the gene code of a mushroom or any type of mycology substance in general to be able to like how we've done with being able to have it eat plastic and get rid of that. We can train it in two ways. One, make it non-toxic to humans to where people can eat this bacteria. And not only does it like, you know how they put fluoride in the water or something is supposed to help with your teeth or something. Well, do that with a mushroom, but make it so it can improve your gut biome. So if you drink tap water, you know, it's a good thing. You know, all those times I was drinking out of the hose as a kid with the fucking sprinkler. Like, you know how easy that would have been if you just had what had some mushroom water or something? Help me out <laughs> on my insides. And then use that in a whole nother way. Let's talk about all the environmental issues that are going on with the oceans, how we're spilling oil and all this stuff in the water. Put some mushrooms down there or put something in the water that can fuse in there and tear away all that oil because we're just letting it sit there we can't get it all yeah we can't and even mushrooms they're 
the mycelium of mushrooms is is kind of like a band-aid as well like the real problem is industry and our practices with it and like choosing money over the health of not only our bodies but of our environment and that directly correlates to our bodies because we're not separate from nature we are a part of nature we are in nature even if we're manipulating it like we're still a part of it we're just manipulating ourselves or we're going to manipulate our children later or grandchildren and so on and so forth until eventually the human race is so sick we're going to not be able to survive or this world is so sick we're going to just all like die <laughs> like that's a well the human race is just fascinating in itself not only just the stuff that we can do and overcome but we think we're the big badasses of just everything you know just because we have more of a i would call an outspoken ability such as like being able to create stuff and be able to be like a top food chain item you know what i mean but when it comes to the real players in the game are the ones that don't fuck with anything. They just do their own thing without bothering anybody. And that's stuff like mushrooms, that's stuff like insects, that's stuff like, you know, the stuff that we consider small scale that don't mean anything really have some of the biggest voices, I think, because they're doing the large scale work that we don't even realize that's going on. Yeah, bacteria runs this world. I would say bacteria is the top of the food chain because when we die, we get eaten by bacteria and fungus. And when we're born, we are born with bacteria all over our bodies and in our stomachs. And that's what helps us stay alive is the bacteria that exists within our system. Yeah, we use Germex to try and kill all the bacteria, but it only kills 99.9%. Yeah, and honestly, we don't really want to kill all the bacteria. I mean, there are a lot of bad bacteria out there, but the more your body is exposed to, the more it has the ability to fight off whatever it is exposed to. That's why vaccinations are somewhat effective. Um, like the flu vaccination is somewhat effective, but that's not a really a bacteria. That's a virus, so it's different. Fungus is where humans evolved from if you ascribe to the theory of evolution I the, mean, people are practically a fungus in general we spread pretty quick yeah <laughs> oh yeah i definitely that, that's what led me to create sam the fungi um that's my personal brand that's um, another name drop i like it okay that was a good one though <laughs> i like that one yeah it, it's something that i just started doing uh november of 2019 and i was like you know, like I, I am a mushroom, you know, I'm like, my thoughts are like spores. We spread them and then people hear them. They, I'm going to use some mushroom terms now. They consolidate in their mind. So they grow out and they spread, they become something new and then they fruit their own mushrooms. And then that person who has that mushroom of a thought spreads their spores to other people, which also get consolidated in different ways and it's like this continuously evolving thing of shared ideas and shared experiences and wanting the same eventual outcome which is to improve our personal health for selfish reasons and then also to improve our our land because we can see oh like if i put different types of fungus in the soil like mycorrhizal fungus which is a type of fungus that doesn't fruit an actual mushroom. It just kind of grows and exists within, uh, within the soil in uh, conjunctivity with plants, uh, with symbiotic relationships with them. It's like, oh, my food tastes better. Oh, my tree just grew like three times the, the amount it did last year. When I, now it has this healthy fungus in the soil. Yeah, see, when people... We talk about associating fungus with something. We always think of the bad stuff. And we always think of the stuff that can get you high. I think we need to look at a, li a little bit more closely when it comes into what are some interesting things that you've learned that is stuff that you tell people to get them interested in mycology. Because sadly, it's not a very popular topic amongst a lot of other things that's going on. I'm pretty sure people food reviewing is pretty popular right now. And I don't think anything even astronomy or astrology whatever you want to call it is not even close to scratching that food review surface <laughs> some things that i say to get people interested are the, the facts that i said earlier like 40 percent of our antibiotics come from fungus 
if you want to get healthier, if you want to live a healthier life, if you want to help grow this world, go outside, go outside and look for fungus because there are over between 1.5 and 5 million different species of fungus on this planet. We know of about 100,000. So we've barely scratched the surface in terms of how much, how many different strains are out there, how much is actually out there that we could eventually utilize for different purposes. Like we found out that oyster mushrooms can help clean up oil spills, not in a very practical way, but they can do it. They have the capabilities to be able to to break down those compounds that we previously thought were not changeable by any sort of like being on this earth like fungus figured it out <laughs> they just did it so who knows what else is out there now when someone asks you about like have you dived into psychedelics at all uh, yes i have um i have personal experiences with it um i i like to say that I got to hear a personal experience, man. Look, I'll admit I've gotten high before, but I've never gotten it off a mushroom. I think I ate a mushroom off the ground one time and it really did not taste like the ones you would get from the store. Yeah, I'll be frankly honest. Um, my relationship with mushrooms in the beginning was pretty um, abusive. I would use mushrooms to escape my problems or to try to, I would chase that high. Um, and then I had one trip where it was a really bad trip and I just had a horrible experience. Um, I got really scared. I, had, I was filled with fear. And I asked myself the question, why am I filled with so much fear? Why am I filled with this feeling of, of just ugliness? And I, I credit this to the mushroom. <laughs> but I, I feel like I was told, look, examine your relationship with, with this being. How are you using this being? Are you using it in a way that it could be beautiful or are you using it to escape something? And I, had, I was called out. I was like, whoa, okay, okay, I see. Like, I'm using this in the wrong way. Like, we can use fungus, psychedelic fungus, for so many different things, like treating treatment, depress, uh, treatment resistant depression and PTSD and all these How can different it be used to treat PTSD um, through guided sessions with a therapist. So, in uh, Michael Pollan just re released a book recently uh, called How to Change Your Mind, and I highly recommend that book for anyone that's interested in psychedelics or interested in diving into that world. Read How to Change Your Mind first, because it outlines the history of psychedelics, why there's so much stigma, micro stigma around that those particular substances and really like how Michael Pollan had his experiences and how he used them and what he saw through all those things. When we talk about psychedelics and the aspect of mushrooms, nobody wants to look at the one question or the one thing that really is a benefit from it is the fact that it opens up something inside of your mind. You know, people relate this to like the third eye or something, but it's the same thing like with getting high. You know, not doing any hardcore drugs, but marijuana where people start to like for me, I've smoked. And let me tell you something, my whole perspective on the world has completely changed because I felt like someone took the sunglasses off my eyes. You know, yeah. I saw everything in extreme more detail when it comes to taking a trip. People love like, oh, I saw aliens. I saw this. Yeah, it is that. But at the same time, there is a moment of clarity or a sense of wholeness and really realistic kind of view of the world and detail around it such as like you start to appreciate more things more you start to really get a grasp on what this life is and realize the fact that it is so beautiful because it is so limited you know we don't know when our day is as much as we want to prolong our life and go all this way to where we want to be immortal or something taking in the moments every step is not going to make you want to live forever you want to enjoy life. You want to you want to sip it like a drink. You know, when you get to the end, the best part is the end. You know, right. it's sad to see it go, but you're loving that you're ready to leave. And 
when people say they want to live forever, I'm like, why? And they're like, because I have too much stuff to get done. I'm like, you're not, you're not taking into account the things that are really mattering around you, such as the air and the trees, such as, you know, the rain on the ground. I mean, I'm looking at my window right now and I can tell you I'm seeing raindrops hit the street and just that clarity, that sense of realistic kind of thing that a lot of people totally gloss over when we get into our cars and go to our jobs and drive down the street in traffic, flicking everybody off because they're in our way and we're late or something. It's like you're missing out on the moments. Yes, absolutely. Like, Go outside and sit in the sun for five minutes and make yourself be still. Just try it. If, if you don't do that, if you're stuck in that grind, if you're stuck in that cycle of just going to work and getting angry and having people be in your way, like, think about who's in whose way. <laughs> like, You're in your own way in that situation. You're stopping yourself from having the best experience that you could possibly have. And of course, you're going to want to live forever because you're not living in every moment. You're living in five minutes from now. You're living in a week ago or a day ago or two weeks from now. You're, li you're not living in the present. And living in the present is really where you find the most happiness. If I had to ask you what is one of your most memorable trips, whether it was a bad experience or a good experience, what would you say it would be? I would say one of my most memorable experiences was when I wasn't even on a substance. I was just myself. And it was, it was in the Gomal River in New Braunfels. I was swimming along with my friends and I, this was my first time at the river. I was really scared. I felt this fear and there's a tube chute there that you can go down and it's recommended you go down it on a tube. Um, but if you're a strong swimmer, you can, just blast down it and like it's one of the most exhilarating things but I had so much fear around that experience and around that thing that I decided to not do it even though my friends did it as well and I was like okay well the next time I'm here I'm gonna live my life to the fullest because that's what one of my that's what my friend Juan Loya said is he's like before you go down this tube shoot ask yourself have I lived my best life like if, if I was to be taken right now, did you live your life to the fullest? And ask yourself that every single time you come up to this tube shoot. Ask yourself that whenever you're in a moment where you're just stuck in a cycle, stuck in your head. Am I living my life to the fullest? There needs to be a way we can mutate a mushroom to be able to attack that thing in our head that's called fear or something, you know, because I think. Fear is not the biggest thing we should be worried about. It's not the thing that we should, I mean, we influence ourselves with fear all the time, such methods like future worrying or future tripping, where you're worried about things that are happening 10 minutes from now, 20 minutes from now, a week from now, two weeks from now. It's like live in the moment. But fear runs our life as much as we think that we're our own maker or we're, we're our own creator. You know, I'm afraid of heights. Okay. I guarantee you, I don't ever want to go skydiving, but the same thing they tell people that skydive, you're afraid every time you go up for it. But once you do it, you don't regret anything. You know, I've talked to a friend of mine, um, Ian McLean. He does a podcast too on whiskey and the history of it, but he skydives every single day. He's taking people um, for training to jump out of air airplanes and stuff. And he gets to see literally a sunrise twice in one day. Oh, and he wow. talks about it. I asked him, I was like, how long have you been doing this? And he's like, I've been doing it for a, a few years now. And I, I said, aren't you scared of doing it? He goes every fucking time. I'm like, you don't <laughs> get used to it. He goes, dude, every time is like my first time. But once you jump out, you realize how free you are. And that's what I think people need to realize is the worst thing as people that we can be afraid of is regret. Yes, absolutely. And I mean, I can only think this way because we think so much of our life is spent on autopilot. So much of our time in this world is spent doing a task after task after task after task, not truly taking into account what's going on around us, not truly taking into account what's important, um, just trying to get through the day. Next thing you know, you. I mean, 2020 for me flew the fuck by. I mean, I, I, it's, it's been a few months now, and it's like, what's, what's next? 
what 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 am I what am I not paying attention to? Because it feels like the days are getting shorter, the months are getting shorter, the years are getting shorter, nothing's getting longer. And I'm start to realize that it's happening with that like that with a lot of people because we're living a life of autopilot, a routine, something that we get stuck in and we never change it up or truly take in a minute just to take a deep breath and take account to the time that's going on around us because it's spinning fast and it's not going to last forever. You don't want 40 years of your life to be wasted just sitting at home watching Netflix all the time. Right. Or living in fear that you that you stay at home and you're just so afraid of something happening that you don't go out and live your life. That, that's how I used to be in high school. I was very much just like, oh, I don't want to do that. I would say no to when my friends wanted to go out to see a movie somewhere. I would be like, oh, no, because something bad would, could happen. And it's like I limited myself in my own happiness and my own experience because of this fear. And it's so it's necessary to have fear in certain situations, but it's unnecessary to live your life by fear. To live your life under the the yoke of fear yeah and um i think people are starting to kind of wake up to it now i don't know how long it's going to take till people start being fully aware but i think with all the small communities that are being created now when it comes to just new old or i guess old style hobbies i would say um people are starting to experience the world in a whole another way because i think we're getting too consumed by our devices i've talked about it before so to save everybody another ear beating for me about cell phones and stuff. But the fact is we're starting to wake up at least a lot of the kids in their twenties. A lot of the um, younger generation is starting to realize there's a lot of better shit to do than sit on your phone all the time. I think we've kind of tapped ourselves out with um, just the way social media is and everything. It seems like it, a lot of the apps and a lot of the stuff isn't as popular anymore. Um, we're starting to realize, hey, let's go out and try this. Let's try skateboarding again. Let's do all these types of acts that I used to do as a kid, or I'm starting to see start to hit kids younger and younger now. And I'm like, there we go. Let's get this going back because playing Fortnite, playing all these things is not going to mean shit. I'm just saying it's way better. You don't want to get nostalgia from your phone. You want to get <laughs> nostalgia from life. You know what I mean? I don't know what my little cousin's going to be like when he gets older. I mean, the fact is, he, like, I get nostalgia from a cereal box. He gets nostalgia when he plays Minecraft. So I don't know how else, like, I'm like, you want to experience this, the world, man, what's going on around you, because you're going to look back. I had my video game moments. You're going to look back and be like, fuck, what, what, what was I accomplishing? Oh, I got all the yeah. achievements on Halo 3. Like, what the fuck does that have to do with anything? Exactly. What, what does it have to do? It's like it what are you accomplishing? Like you said, what are you achieving when you, when you finish a, playing a game? It's like that game was literally set up for you to do that. I'm not going to lie though. When I got that achievement for killing two people with one Spartan laser, I was pretty fucking happy <laughs> <laughs> that I'll put on my college resume. But <laughs> when we really look at everything and trying to figure out what we want i found out information is very very valuable i spent my whole life not really liking the education system because it gave up on me for having adhd they thought i was like mentally challenged or something and i was just disruption it's easier to send me out than keep me there and when i got older i started realizing especially with starting this podcast the conversations i've had knowledge is fucking power I mean, I spend so much of my time just gathering information. I come across so many people now where I think it's common sense. It's not common sense. You know, we talk about street smarts and book smarts. You know, I've always had good street smarts. But when I'm having a conversation with someone and they say something, I'm like, how do you not know this? Like, how do you not know that? And I mean, it works in the same opposite way, too. I've met people that have PhDs where I'm like, who the fuck gave you a PhD? Like, and then I started to realize, oh, it's just a piece of paper. It's just a piece of paper that has a certain amount of time that you spent trying to do something. Doesn't mean you're actually smarter than anybody else. You know, I've talked to a wide variety of people in my knowledge. I don't know anything. I know very, very little. And I've always been told like, oh, you're a kid. You just think you know everything. I'm like, I know nothing. You know, there's so much in this world to learn. The fact that we're never going to be able to fully even scratch the surface of everything is fascinating to me. Yeah, it, it's awesome. And like one of the main people that does mycological stuff 
that is really prevalent now that you see a lot of is Paul Stamets. He's just everywhere. And he didn't formally go to school to receive a doctorate. He received a doc doctorate, uh, uh, an honorary doctorate of science uh, from the National College for Natural Medicine. And that was just because of his achievements that he's done on his own. He, did, he decided kind of like you are, where he's just out here gathering knowledge. And he's like, all right, I have all this knowledge. Let me put it to a practical use. When you do that, you can achieve so much without really like expending all of that money and time and effort on school. Cause I, I had to ask myself the question, like, what, what do I want to do? You know, like what do I want to go to school? W would school be the best option for learning about mycological things? And the degrees that I found and the schools that I found, they didn't really match what I wanted to learn. They were just like really expensive agreements between humans that said that, oh, this human knows these things according to these other humans. Dude, I got my freaking um, ordained minister's license under the United Church of Bacon over my college diploma. So that shows you how much the piece of paper means. Once I started to realize like, why are, so what are you doing? What are you going to do when you grow up? It's like, well, I'm 24, but I'm in school. Okay. I'll talk to you in two years when you get done with it. What are you going to do? Well, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm not going to school anymore. It's a safeguard. It's a thing. We don't truly know what we want to do. Some people find it out in the beginning and some people find it out later in life. Hopefully it hits you in the beginning so you can figure out how to you know, overcome your challenges and figure out where you want to go in life. But do we truly know or is it just thrusted upon us? You know, when I figured out that a piece of paper that with a degree on it doesn't mean shit, you know, it's like now they're telling me, oh, you need to get your bachelor's. Oh, you need to get your master's next. I'm like, oh, well, shit. Well, when's that when's that rope end? Why can't I just gather my own sense of knowledge? Much like the guy you were explaining, he's living his life like a fungus. He's living his life like a mushroom. He's getting dived into everything and spreading so many different spores out where he can one day know a bunch of everything you know have a little bit of everything you're never going to truly recognize that mushroom patch until a few years later or something later down the road where you're like oh i never noticed that before because it takes a long time to build a foundation it takes a long time but once you build the foundation you can easily create your structure absolutely absolutely i agree a hundred percent and it's like that's what i recommend to more people is live your life like a mushroom and there's nothing wrong with it with going after academic achievements. We need all peoples in this world. We need everyone who enjoys doing what they love to do. And if you love going to school, go to school, get those degrees, like get it, like get your PhD, get your master's, get two masters, get two bachelors, get all these things. And like that, you literally, you just pro we should write a book called the life of a mushroom. Ooh. Fucking. <laughs> best motivational book in the business this one's not teaching you about oh i went through a car accident and then this happened to me or you got to be better than who you are you know yelling we're just gonna be like be like a mushroom man start diving into everything and see what you truly get interested in you're gonna come across something inside of yourself which a lot of people come across with psychedelics you know a lot of people come across with any type of thing that kind of lets them see clearer, I would say, you know, it might cloud up your mind a little bit the next day. But when you truly get to experience true detail and true awakening inside one's mind, it's the same thing. When you start diving into a bunch of different things at once, multitasking, a lot of people want to focus on one thing, which I'm at fault doing myself too. But when you start going, let me get a little information from here. Let me get a little information from here. Let me get a little information from there. You start to figure out what really super interests you. That's why you get so many different classes that are not the one you want to take because they're trying to make sure this is what you truly want. You know, this is the road you want to go down. For me, I'm gathering so much information from articles, from just doing my own research to ancient history to whatever it is, to literature, talking to so many people that are interested in so many different things. You know, you, I'll get the comment like, why, like, are you just trying to get guests so they can talk about themselves? I'm like, that's not it. It's a conversation, but yeah. I'm asking questions. There's nothing written down. You know, I always have like 
people go, what's your list of questions or something? I'm like, it's all, it's all improv because I'm out here literally trying to educate myself as well as have a conversation with you. You know, you learn things from me. I learn things from you. We learn from stimulus. We learn from research. We learn from information and processing, not from a fucking phone article that tells us two boxes of Brazen Brand will give you stomach cancer. So that's a big shout out to fuck you, WebMD, because you scared the living shit out of me after I ate two boxes. <laughs> but you live and you learn, you know? Yeah, totally. I, yeah. I, I, I I can be a very serious person, but I love to use humor in my everyday life because it's so much easier to get information in that way. I mean, how many times you go to a lecture or something and the teacher's just sitting there reading off a board or reading off a textbook? That's not going to help me fucking learn. No. You know, you got you to gotta make it fun. You got to be like, let me show you this mushroom. Next thing you know, you pull out a mushroom and you start showing the person how beautiful it looks and how fucking badass those things look. That's why they're on every single psychedelic trippy art painting is because that they're badass, you know? They yeah. can literally show the true expression of creativity. Yeah, and mushrooms were around before plants were. Like mushrooms are one of the oldest being, or I'm sorry, fungus is one of the oldest beings on this planet. Like there's a theory that um, these, I want to call them protozoa, but that's not the right word. They're mushroom trees. If you look up mushroom trees, you should be able to find them. But they're, they were these massive, like eight foot tall, giant, like thick mushrooms that, that grew, uh, when the earth's atmosphere wasn't conducive to plant life and through the death of these mushrooms, it actually changed the composition of the atmosphere to allow for the proliferation of life as we know it. Like, like <laughs> fungus is where everything started. Like how could it not be beautiful? You just, well, now we're going to have to write a song called fungus is where it's at. Oh, fungus is where it's at. All these ideas, man, all these ideas. I'm a, I'm a, a, I'm an innovator. <laughs> yes or a distributor i would like to just see i don't like the idea though then it comes to the fact is we look at mushrooms as things you put on your salad things you, th things that look like my dick it's like no stop let's stop doing that type of descriptive narrative pin down with mushrooms and let's start looking at the major benefits of what we can be receiving if we truly tried to open up a door into something. If you started to structure your life a little bit like that, diving into more information, gathering as much as possible, literally one of the main things they said, sometimes watching is the best thing because you watch and you learn. That's a fucking mushroom. They don't affect anybody. They do stuff on a, mic a literally a micro scale compared to what we do. We're just loud and knocking things around. I mean, if I could think of the list of stuff we could start manipulating with mushrooms with, we could use that to be able to grow it on the side of a building that we want torn down and have that mushroom gen like that mushroom genetic code fixed to the point where it could de destroy the building slowly over time. So we wouldn't have to worry about like if we say what's the, um, Bill Nye's kind of documentary, his new show that he's doing really enlightened me to this. He said people always say to stop or save the earth all humankind has to die and yeah. that's not true because we've already made so much damage it would never save the earth it would just leave it to stop it from decomposing to where it's at what we need to do is all these things that we build and we fucking leave we abandon and we just leave it hanging there so the earth will randomly just take it down at one point it still stays there it gets soaked up into the earth it gets damaged that gets done to it let's get something with mushrooms going if they can tear down plastic who's to say we can't start using that to put it on a building and watch it slowly decompose it over time yeah I and mean, they are actually making buildings that have mushrooms embedded in the walls like there was a i don't know exactly where it was but there is this they, they built a, an actual house made of mycelium so it's made of wood and it's made from spawn of mushrooms. So basically wood, sawdust, wood chips, and that was inoculated with mycelium. And like someone made a boat made of mycelium. And this, when they take this boat out of the water and they like use it for a summer, every time they take it out of the water, it starts to fruit. So like they're, that, that thing that they just grew and made is also a source of food if you use the right materials like you could grow a building that could feed you like you could grow a building 
that has negative carbon impact. You can actually like decrease the CO2 in the atmosphere by growing mushrooms, like by growing mushroom buildings. So I think, I think that's the next wave right there. That's the next wave. Where do you see mycology taking place in the next 20 years? Do you think it's going to start expanding out a little bit more? Do you think it's still going to be a small niche community that it is? I think like what's really interesting, if you look up like the hashtag mycology, which is kind of where I found you from. But when you look into mycology, everyone is very, 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 very positive. You know, these old school arts, these types of studies and stuff, it's very, very positive. If you look at the new hot trending ones, the reason why they're so popular is because it's so negative. People need conflict in their everyday life. You know, you can't grow without something kind of being in the way. You know, you got to learn to grow past that. But people tend to let that hold them back. You know, when we look at something, anything that's popular, it's always something that involves a little bit of hate. But when you look at something so small and so much more beneficial, such as mycology, such as woodworking, there are benefits. There are a, it's a community. They're growing together, not apart. Yeah, absolutely. And I would say mycology is just on the cusp of really taking off. Like, like there are so many more people interested in fungus. Like I'm doing classes here in San Antonio. People are really wanting to know this. People want this knowledge. They want to be empowered. And it's like. I like what uh, my uh, my friend Philip, the also the president of CTMS, uh, s said was he's like I I want to make people the magicians. I don't want people to be wowed by the magic. I want them to be the ones doing the magic, because we can. Like if you garden, if you have a garden in your front yard, you're making magic right there. Like that is magic. Like life is magic. We just need to have more of it experience we plant this we literally need to plant the seed and let it grow right except the tomato plant because if you don't if you miss one day of watering that son of a bitch it dies <laughs> only with certain I, plants only with certain I, I learned that shit the hard way literally you could a fungus you don't even have to touch it it just grows it's just like let me be me man i'll do my own thing and you worry about you and then you look at me later when i'm big and beautiful <laughs> yeah well, I really appreciate you coming out and doing the podcast, Sam. It was awesome talking to you. I really appreciate you enlightening me a little bit on the mushroom aspect of things too. Definitely have a deeper feeling or meaning for mushrooms now for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm glad that I could help spread spores. Damn, that was a good one. That's probably the best one of the episode, I would have to say. <laughs> Now, I really want to give you here a minute at the end to kind of promote your nonprofit organization and kind of promote your Instagram too, so people can look up this and maybe you can help them get interested into mycology as well. Thank you. Yeah. So if you're interested in mycology and you want to learn more, you can look me up. I'm Sam the Fungi, F U N G I. Um, Facebook and Instagram. Uh, you can message me with any questions you have. Um, if you want to get involved with an organization of really amazing humans, people who are also consolidated by mushrooms. You can look up the Central Texas Mycological Society and we're a newly That formed sounds like, well, that sounds like an Illuminati. What, can you explain that one a little bit more towards me? Like what exactly are you, are you guys trying to promote? So we're trying to just increase awareness of mushrooms, um, kind of end myco stigma and that, that mycophobia, myco fear, um, just kind of enlighten people on on the different aspects of mushrooms and do so by coming together and just talking about mushrooms or like going and doing a class and having a bunch of people show up like we have a, a free class every month we have a community meeting so we have one this coming uh, month in february on the 20th um, in san antonio at eco centro where we're just going to be gathering and talking about what who we are what we do as an organization and where where we want to go and how people in San Antonio can get involved. I think the best way to be able to promote is the same thing. We need to show people like for how many years, especially when I was a kid, I don't know how many times someone would be like, if there's black mold, if there's this, if there's that, if there's this. Yes, those are the dangerous ones. But you, they, at that age and at that understanding of where we were as people, we thought 
fungus, mushrooms, all these types of things were really, really bad and to stay away from them. We're warned from where we're kids to stay away. It's the same knowledge that we had when we thought that if you ate fat, fat was going to make you fat. No, it was a lie from the sugar industry. And 10 years later, we find out that lie. Same thing with the mushrooms and the fungus. Yes, there are some bad ones out there, but there's a hell of a more beneficial ones. Let's get a light on the beneficial ones and stop and start teaching kids to be worried of or wary of the bad ones, but show them that there's so much more benefit into the mushrooms and don't be afraid of them. And we'll have a more opened up society to the idea of fungus in general. Absolutely. Increase mycoeducation, you know? Mm, yeah. And maybe decide to maybe put some on your salad sometimes. It's not a bad choice. They're actually pretty good people. Yeah, heck yeah. Enoki's on a salad? Mm. Well, Have you well, ever tried pickled there. mushrooms? Pickled mushrooms? Is that yeah. them in like a vinegar or something? Yeah, it's like a salt brine kind of vinegary thing. I have never tried that. They are absolutely delicious. I've tried some shiitakes that were uh, pickled. Oh, man. Like, enokis that are pickled and in on salads, like, the flavor profile is fantastic. Oh, dude. If I had to ask you, if you found a mushroom species that has not been named yet, what would you call it? Ooh. Dang, that's a hard question. I don't know. Uh, it depends on where I found it. You know, it, it, I'll probably name it after the environment that I found it in. Yeah, it's one of those like spur of the moment type things. Like when you find it, you just know. Yeah, because I would I would call mine mix ma mix master mush. Mix master mush. <laughs> yeah, and I make a brand of like mushroom style food or something. Mix master mushes mushroom souffle. <laughs> That's a good food too, mushroom stew. Yo, I might actually have that for dinner tonight. Hey, nice. Well, I really appreciate you, Sam, coming out and doing the podcast. I'll make sure that all your links and everything um, get put in the description so people can find your organization, people can find your Instagram, and people can, you know, obviously come to you when they have questions about mushrooms. Absolutely. Thank you for having me on your podcast. It was really fun. Hey, do you want to wrap us up? Um, sure. Um, do it the way you would end something. Ooh, okay. Let's decrease mycostigma, increase mycoawareness, and end mycophobia. We can all spread spores. We can all be mushrooms. Let's get it.